Welcome to part 46. Now we are doing the spirit temple for real. And now that we are child link, we can crawl through that small hole and proceed onwards. So yeah. And there's somebody at that small hole. And it looks like a thief. And could this be Ganondorf's second in command that we've heard so much about? And of course, um, when she interrogates Link, she'll ask, what do I want? Now, do not answer with the first two. She won't care the least about the temple or the sages. Just say nothing really. And then she'll get curious and it's like, you want to do a favor for me? And then she'll ask this question if you are one of Ganondorf's minions. Well, you could be one too, so um, let's proceed with caution. Answer, um... Yeah, what if I am? What if I am one of Ganondorf's peeps? And of course, she doesn't buy it, so yeah. But actually, with the second answer, it doesn't really matter. You just get slightly different dialogue. Anyway, she will introduce herself as Naburu, of course. And she is a lone wolf thief. Wait a second. And of course, she will explain that she pretty much hates Ganondorf. Even though they're both thieves, um, Naburu here follows a sort of a moral code with Ganondorf and his group. He, they pretty much kill people, rob from women and children and the likes, and she will not serve that kind of man even though by law, by their laws, when a man is born every 100 years, they have to bow to him as the king. So yeah, basically she is here in the spirit temple so that... She can pre so she can screw up Ganondorf's plans for world domination. Now, of course, she cannot fit through that small hole as she is an adult. However, Child Link can, and she wants to use Child Link to get in to get the treasure, which is the Silver Gauntlets, or which are the Silver Gauntlets. Basically, they're the ones powerful enough to move that big block on the other end of this room. And basically, we have no choice but to help her in order for us to get into the small hole ourselves. So yeah, we're supposed to go in, agree to help her get the Silver Gauntlet so we can give them to her so she can screw up Ganondorf's plans. And of course, uh, she will um, try and give us a nice reward for um, getting the Silver Gauntlet, so yeah. I mean, it's not a bad idea going back into the past to screw up a Ganondorf's plans. I mean, yeah, but before I continue with that thought, um, when, you, when you go into the hole or while in the hole or when you get out of the hole make sure you switch to the Hylian shield because on the other side there will be fire keys and again if they touch your wooden shield say goodbye to it and then we have to kill all the keys watch out for the blade traps and there is a um, armo statue right there so again best strategy plant a bomb activate it just as the bomb is about to explode and it'll die all right, and when we kill all the enemies, the doors will unseal, and what you have to do is go to the one on the left. The unsealed door from the left uh, when you face that wall. So, yeah. Anyway, back to my um, thoughts about um, about screwing up uh, Gandor's plans in the past. I mean, it is a sound theory, because um, if we somehow manage to screw up Gandor's plans in the past, um, we could uh, pretty much... Uh, ruin his chance to ru rule the future. Now, unfortunately, at this point in time, Gandorf has already seized control, uh, well, is already on his way to seize control of um, the land of Hyrule. So, um, and he's already attacked the castle, pretty much chased uh, Zelda Impa out of the castle, and yeah. But if there was only a way we can go back further in time, go back slightly further, back to where Princess Zelda was still in the castle, back so far back that we can warn pretty much the people of Gandor's plans so that we can stop him, we can prevent his seven year rule. I mean, if that were only possible. So yeah. And goody, Astolfos. We have to face one of these as Child Link. Goody. Yeah, what sucks is we are reduced to our stupid butter knife, the Kokiri Sword. I mean, after playing with the Master Sword for a couple of temples and switching to the much superior Biggeron Sword, we have we are now reduced back to our first sword of the entire game, this weak little dagger. And of course, 
with that it'll take it'll take a little while for me to defeat this guy so jump attacks are your best friends in this temple now before we proceed uh, to uh, solve the this room's little uh, puzzle we have to kill the green bubble again these things are so weak it can go down within one hint after it's a uh, green uh, uh, bubble thing disappears of course you could stun it with the boomerang to make things a little easier but eh, whatever speaking of the boomerang you see that crystal switch on the other end we have to use the boomerang and make sure you toss it like like aim around the, the great thing and when the boomerang goes around it will connect with the crystal switch and it'll bring the great down forming a bridge for us to cross yeah and that's five rupees goody anyway this next room here will introduce us to a brand new enemy the enemy here is called the Anubis now this thing will mimic your moves as you move across the room and can breathe fire at you but here's the ironic thing folks it itself is vulnerable to fire yes now you can use uh, either a fire trap that's in this very room or take the easy way out and use dense fire and it'll kill him instantly like that and when he's dead we can proceed onward that crystal switch right there it will activate the fire trap and what you would do if you are not going to use dense fire is just uh, move to the move across the room again this thing mimics your moves mirrors your moves so you want to uh, be careful not to get hit alright anyway here we are we have another silver rupee challenge but before we deal with that make sure we kill all the enemies in this room especially the wall master because you'll be collecting silver rupees la dee da dee da then the shadow will come down and nab you and drag you back up to the beginning of this uh, dungeon and then you have to start all over and then you'll see Naburu's like what the heck have you what the heck are you doing back here at the beginning how'd you get back here of course um, that doesn't happen in the game as far as I'm aware of but yeah it's kind of weird oh and the good thing is you can actually kill the keys uh, through this um, fence wall because somehow the openings are big enough for the boomerang to make con contact now it doesn't exactly work if uh, the keys are flying around because they will be out of range oh and there's a gold skull toller right there as well but be careful even though it's on the other side of the fence if you are make contact with it you'll still take damage so yeah and once we collect all five silver rupees we can the grate will fall down forming a bridge and we can cross it and we're not done yet we still have to get one more thing before leaving this room of course it's a good idea to kill the key so it will not bug you all right then go to the other side of this room and use the boomerang to kill this gold skull tola and collect the token boy this invokes memories of the earlier dungeons but that's the entire point of this uh, spirit temple it's kind of a little one last hurrah as child link all the child link traps or a good number of child links traps and skills are put to the test in this dungeon so yeah now what we have to do before we leave we have to light these two torches that are right next to me now you can either use a Deku stick on the big torch on the other side of this fenced wall or just use Den's fire to light them up. Either way they have to get lit because once lit a small treasure chest will fall down and it will contain the small key. Yay. I have to say I like the music of the spirit temple especially that or that opening riff you know you know you know the you know the riff I'm talking about yeah in fact I like this whole thing it evokes of Arabian Nights and it's like me in fact the one best thing about the Zelda series is the music 
and I will not stop pretty much comment I will not stop like explaining how great the music is in fact in my future LPs of future Zelda games I will continue to express my love for the music of the Zelda game so yeah of course before we climb this wall kill the skull wall told us because again if they see you they will home in on you and they will kill you Oh, well, not kill you, knock you down so they'll so be forced to start climbing back upward, and so yeah. Of course, we hear more of that little shh, 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 shh. But don't worry, it is not a skull wall toa, it is a gold skull toa. So what we have to do is climb all the way up to the top, and then turn around, and we will see the gold skull toa right there. Now, you, again, you can either use the slingshot, or use the boomerang to kill it and nab the skull token. And yeah. Now, once we collect the token, we are not done with this room yet. In fact, this room is um, actually um, kind of interesting when you think about it. Now, there are skull wall tolas along um, this um, what appears to be a unstable portion of the wall. So let's kill them both right quick. And once we kill them, proceed to the uh, wall area right here, and we will encounter a pair of lizard foes. Now, of course, um, and of course, again, kill them like we can before, and, like, these little lizard foes, basically, they will not, like, attack one at a time, they will, um, just hop around and attack and attack and attack, I mean, they're different from the ones in, the um, Dodongo's Cavern, so, yeah, and of course, let's summon the other one, bring him down, and then, after we kill them, we'll be free to do what we have to do here. Now, on the floor of this room is a big sun symbol with a smiley with that's closed. It's this big old sun face thing. Now, our goal here is to let sunlight touch the sun face thingy, the sun switch. And when it, it when sunlight is on it, it will wake up, grin all smile like, and it will unseal the door for us. Yeah. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to hit the crystal switch with my boomerang because it will reveal a small uh, treasure chest. And let's open said treasure chest because um, it could be something that we really need. Of course, this one contains five rupees, so... Alright. Now, this is the one we need to open. And we get some bomb chews. Why do we have bomb chews here? Why now? Well, it turns out, after a long time of carrying carrying these things, we are now going to put these movable bombs to actual use. Yes, these things are not as worthless as they first appear. Turns out, what we have to do is we need to destroy this uh, piece of rock up there. And, of course, um, we have to bomb it. And, of course, regular bombs will not work. So, we're going to have to use these things to pretty much... Um, well, pretty much uh, bomb the thing, and as you can see here, um, if they contact any other surface, they will explode on impact. So yeah, once uh, the bomb tube destroys the thing, the door unseals, and we can go on further. And look how that grin and the sun switch is all happy, it has light on it. It's kind of freaky when you think about it. It's like it's almost alive. Ugh. Anyway, here, we are now in the central chamber of the Spirit Temple. This is called the central chamber because, um, there's pretty much a, it's pretty much a big room. It's pr probably a worship room. And there, and right there in the middle of this room is the statue of the Goddess of the Sand. A smaller version, but still kind of big for this room. So, yeah. Anyway... When we go here, go to this little platform that's between um, two fire torches. And of course, use dense fire here. And when we do, it will make a big chest appear. And that chest will contain the dungeon map. Alright. So yeah. Anyway, folks. um, Like, this dungeon is a unique dungeon because... It does require both Child Link and Adult Link to fully complete it. I mean, because, um, yeah. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, but Adult Link went into Dodongo's Cavern. Well, 
True, but that was only to get a skull total that Child Link was unable to get. Child Link had already beaten the skull, had already beaten the Dongo's Cavern by the time Adult Link entered that place. So, yeah. This place requires both versions of Link to complete. Because, um, well, I guess the developer's like, hey, this is the last major dungeon in the game before our final destination. Let's give Link one last hurrah. Let's give Child Link one last hurrah. So, yeah, we're gonna give Link a big last hurrah. Last, last hurrah here. So, yeah. Alright, now, here's the thing about Naburu here. Naburu is pretty much a lone wolf. She practically hates Ganondorf. She will. N she's here to screw up his plans. And yet, when we talk to the thieves in the Gerudo's Fortress, they said that Naburu is a loyal servant to Ganondorf, his second in command. Well, think about this, folks. When Ganondor when um, when we were talking to the thieves, um, Link was an adult. He was big and all grown up. When we said about this uh, exalted Naburu and the second in command kind of thing. Now, here we are as child Link, and Naburu it pretty much hates Ganondorf's guts. So that means that between now and seven years later, something happened to make Naburu loyal to Ganondorf, and we'll see what it is later in this video. Anyway, this room here, what we have to do here is move these blocks to remove a sunblock that contain a block that contains a sunblock, and we have to get it to the light to unseal the doors. And we have to destroy the Beemos to uh, make sure they are not a pest. And once we get the sun blocked to the um, sunlight, it will unseal the door. And yeah, and we can also use the uh, other blocks to block the blade traps. And since it'll take a little while for me to get them into position, um, I'll speed things along in just a bit so you won't get bored. So uh, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, as you've noticed, and when I sped things up, if you actually actually push these blocks like beyond the blade traps limits, like if you push them right through the, push them like too far to, from one end to the other while trying to block the blade traps, they will actually the blade traps will actually glitch through these blocks and damage you. So um, you want to be careful with that. Now, even though we've unsealed the door with the uh, sun block touching sunlight. As you have, as you see clearly, there are silver rupees, which means we have to collect some. Because what we have to do is, there's actually a small key in the room. So what we're going to have to do is collect all these silver rupees. Now, will all these silver rupees yield us a silver, a, a small key? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's collect all of these silver rupees. And anybody getting tired of this whole silver rupee concept? Because, um, I mean, I think, in my opinion, they go a bit overboard near the end of the game with this uh, idea. And, uh, I, well, I'm probably not the only one who gets annoying with this whole concept of silver rupees, collecting all of them at bizarre locations, absurd locations to get them. So, yeah. Anyway, by collecting all five of these silver rupees, we light this torch right here. We light a torch. Nope, no small key yet. We have to light a torch. And of course, then we have to use the Deku stick, light every single one of these unlit torches, which thankfully there are three of them, around and we have to, and only then, only after lighting these unlit torches, we get the small key. Unfortunately, of course, the, there are dangers of Deku sticks burning out and the uh, torches um, all um, losing their fire before all three are lit so yeah so we have to go through multiple puzzles in order to get one small key okay I mean yeah but finally after all this headache we get the small key and we can leave this room 
I'm sorry for that annoying sound with the blade traps are making it I mean that little noise they're making but hey it's either that or get or get uh, damaged by these things even though they only take like a small chunk of health off I still I still don't want to get hurt period by these things all right small key in hand let's get out of here let's move on now right here turn around and there is another gold skull above that door so again, let's equip the boomerang and let's uh, kill it. And la la, killing the Skulltola. Let's collect its token because we have to help that one big guy in the house of Skulltola free from the curse. All right, goody. Let's get the token and move onward. Now through the door up ahead, we will encounter a mini boss for a Small Link and. By killing that mini boss, we will get access to the silver gauntlets. So yeah, and um, I have to warn you now, this boss can be pretty difficult, and I'll show you why once we uh, get started. Of course, smash the parts, pots for any health or any other things, and let's go through the door. And of course, it's a good idea to equip Naru's love, and I'll show you why. Right here in this room, there appears to be a suit of armor in a chair. What you want to do here now is hit it to activate it. And folks, meet the Iron Knuckle. The Iron Knuckle is this big old suit of armor, which first appeared in the Adventures of Link. It's actually a very dangerous opponent. His axe pretty much, uh, when, when it strikes Link, it will take a good chunk of health. Like one strike took four hearts away from me. So yeah, at this point I had to activate Nauru's love because it will protect me from his attack. Now even though I am protected from um, the, his attacks, when he content when he hits me with that axe, he will still knock me back. He will still um, toss me around. But so it's a good idea to try and dodge his attacks if possible. Now about halfway through his fight, he will lose his armor. He'll he'll take enough damage that he will lose his armor. And at that point, uh, he will be a little faster and um, a little more dangerous. But still, if you are quick, if you make sure you have Naru's shield available, and you'll kill this guy no problem. Now, if you manage to get the Iron Knuckle to destroy one of the pillars in this room, it'll, the pillars will contain the heart. So, um, it'd be a nice way to get some hearts back if he... Um, well, pretty much wails on you with the ham with his axe, and and you are ran out of energy using Naru's love or something like that. So yeah. Anyway, he's dead. The door is unsealed. Let's go get the silver gauntlets. All right. Oh, hi, Owl. I haven't seen you in a long time. Good day, more rambling. All right. Oh, here's a little fun fact about the owl, folks. Turns out the owl right here, he is actually a reincarnation of a pre of a sage, and he is actually the reincarnation of Rauru. Yeah, the light sage. And, and I pretty much preferred him in his human form. At least he was more direct, gave me new information. However, in this case, he did give me new information, as is, there are two witches that live here in order to kill them, reflect their own attacks upon one another. Now, I wonder if, and this information will be important later on, trust me. Well, regardless, that's the last time we will see the owl in the game, and now we are going to get the silver gauntlets, which will allow us to move big, heavy things. But of course, we can't use it as Child Link, and we promised Naboo that we give it to her. Oh, darn. Well, maybe she can screw up Ganondorf's plans. Maybe I can retire or something. Or maybe not. Something's happened. Something's happening down there. As you can see here... There are those witches that the owl mentioned. And of course, uh, they are sucking Naburu down this uh, purple vortex. And she is warning Link to get out while he still can. While he still cans. 
And, oh boy. And the witches are going into the spirit temple. What, a, what, a, what an amazing coincidence that Naboo happens to be uh, put out of the way so that Link will be the one to use the silver gauntlets. So, yeah, there's nothing we can do for poor Naboo right now. So, yeah. Anyway, we are done as Child Link. And now it's time to go back to the future. We're done with Child Link. Can you believe it? That means that from the moment we pull the Master Sword out of its pedestal, we will be Adult Link until the end of the game. Yes, we'll be playing him as Adult Link for the rest of the game. So yeah, say goodbye to playing as Child Link in Ocarina of Time. <laughs> say goodbye to this cute little boy. <laughs> Okie dokie. And notice that as soon as Adult Link appears, the Silver Gauntlets are immediately equipped onto him. See how he's all pimped out? He now has some bling on his arms and stuff. So yeah, before I go back to the Spirit Temple, I can do some things right now. In fact, I'm going to be doing this good old thing called a brief interlude to uh, get some stuff. Now, the first stop I want to go to is uh, Zorus Fountain. Because, believe it or not, there is one more Gold Skull Tola in this area that we have to get. Now, what we want to do here is head towards the area where the Great Fairy Fountain is located. Or at least the cave entrance to the Great Fairy Fountain is located. And see those the boulders right here? The gray boulder right here? Well, it turns out that there it's a type of boulder that cannot be destroyed by either, the, by either bombs or the Megaton Hammer. Now... Thing, but but because now that we have the power of silver coursing through our veins we can just lift that gray rock and toss it aside and yeah anyway it will reveal a piece of rock we can destroy and then we will go down this little passageway because this passageway will take us all the way to the gold skull tola and this passageway is actually protected by some invisible big skull tolas along the way so, you want to be careful with that. Now, of course, uh, the Lens of Truth always helps if you want to see where they're going. But also, be on the lookout for their shadows. Or Navi, when you get close enough, will you do her thing where she turns yellow and floats up to where the enemy is, thus revealing their position. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it seems that the big skull tolas go through all this, go to all this in order to uh, protect the gold skull tola. So I don't know if the gold skull tolas are um, like a master, or, um, are like the masters of the skull tolas in general. But of course, they are was responsible for a curse because of a family's greed. They want to be rich, and of course, they pay the price. Of course, it's our duty to help people, and that's what I'm doing. I am Link. I am the hero of time. I help people. In fact, I've been helping people throughout this entire game, and I will help that guy, the adult, the father, I think, of the House of Skulltola, regain his human form. And once we kill the uh, Gold Skulltola and collect his token, we will be done. We will move on to the next area of our... Um, of my little collection time. My final collection time, really. And of course, now, on the way back to Gerudo Valley, the favor that the uh, carpenters did, they remade the bridge. They made the bridge so that we can cross here without jumping over again. And even though it will cost us that scene by jumping all over again, I mean, I mean that was a cool little animation um, of us, of uh, Link on Epona jumping over that cliff. That was cool. But now with the bridge rebuilt, it's gone. Anyway, go back to the horseback range. And on one of the targets is a Gold Skull Tola. The last one of this area. And one I should have gotten my first time I visited the area. But hey, that's one of the great things about the Zelda games. Nothing is truly lost forever. I mean, if you decide to just um, say, um, wait this long before collecting all the gold skull tolas 
if you decide to just wait until the very end of the game to collect all of them, you're free to do so. So yeah. Anyway, once we collected the Gold Skull Tola, we pretty much got all. We pretty much got every Gold Skull Tola in the Gerudo Valley area, I believe. And with that, let's go to the Spirit Temple slash Desert Colossus because we're going to collect some more things there. Yep, we're not done yet. Now, back in the Desert Colossus, the Magic Bean will grow into a Magic Leaf and we will ride it to a couple of different locations. First off, when we get to the Magic Leaf, we will ride into a rock that will contain a Gold Skull Tola. So let's do so. We woo ride it, like ride the leaf, be the leaf. And of course, right here, hop off, and there is a skull tola right there waiting for the kill. Of course, it'd be nice to get a good strike distance. And when I killed that nasty crow, I killed the gold skull tola. Double whammy. Love that. Fracking crows. I hate these enemies. Like, you mind your own business, and then all of a sudden, bam, here they come. Ow, ow, ow. Of course, there's that battle music that lets us know that, um, that forms up that they're coming. But that only occurs at night because, um, what, because in the daytime, the, like, this theme, the usual Gerudo Latinesque music theme plays. So we don't get a warning. We don't get that battle music. So yeah. And of course, in order to, there is one more Gold Skull Tola in this area. And it's actually near the Oasis. This now dried up, once again, Oasis. On one of the palm trees. So, turn it to night, and we'll go for it. And I hate this crow! I hate you, Gwai! You fracking crow enemies! Die! What you... What they... And, uh, yeah. The only difficult thing about getting the um, Skull Tola is because you have to get into the proper position in order to get the Skull Tola. And, of course, there are levers everywhere. Because, and um, you don't want to get hit by the levers while trying to get the Gold Skull Tola from a safe distance. So, yeah, if you try to get a good angle and tr like from inside the Oasis, you should be alright. Unless those crows come in down and attack you. Alright, now there's one more thing we can get before we can go back into the Spirit Temple and finish finish it. Go back to the Magic Bean Leaf. We will ride it and see the archway in front of the Spirit Temple. On top of it will contain our last heart piece of the game. Our final heart piece. Once we collect this, we will be up to 19 hearts. Ooh, 19. Now, of course, there's enough uh, room for one more heart afterwards, which means we have to go back into the Spirit Temple, kill the boss, and get a full heart container. So, fun. Alright, folks. As soon as I collect this heart piece, I will go back into the Spirit Temple, and in my next video, we will finish it. We will see what happened to Nabooru. We will get behind the mystery of these witches, and yeah. Alright folks, let's do this. I'll see you in part 47.